Welcome to this ISB webcast about dynamic risk management project. My name is Ziki Ni, and join me here today is Matthias Schuler. We are both members of the technical staff at ISB. This is webcast one out of eight, and this one will give you an overview about the DRM model. As you may know, the dynamic risk management project has a long history. When the ISB published the new hedge accounting chapter in IFRS 9, an accounting policy choice to continue with the requirements of IF 39 was included, and the intention was to keep this choice until the project on dynamic risk management was completed. The objective of the ISB is to better reflect in financial reporting how interest rate risk management affects amount, timing, and uncertainty of cash flows. Towards that end, the ISB published in 2014 a discussion paper. Accounting for Dynamic Risk Management, a Portfolio Revaluation Approach to Macro Hedging. Unfortunately, the feedback on the discussion paper was not positive and therefore the ISB decided to develop a new model between 2017 and 2019, the DRM Core Model. The DRM team performed informal outreach on the new DRM Core Model in 2020 and as a result, the ISB made a number of refinements to reflect the feedback received and make the Core Model viable and operable. We are working towards an exposure draft now, and you may find some more details about the project history on our website. In contrast to the general hedge accounting model in IFRS 9 or I39, the DRM model is not a hedge accounting model. Instead, it's rather akin to a revaluation model trying to capture the economic effects of an entity's risk mitigation activities in accounting. We hope this webcast will give our stakeholders an overview of the model in order for you to evaluate the key features of the refined DRM core model. In particular, it focuses on the recent refinements and how they fit together with the tentative decisions the ISB has made so far. The staff will also walk through the operating cycles of applying the DRM model in order to bring the individual elements and the measurement requirements together in a simplified illustrative example. Let's start with an overview of the key elements of the model as it stands today, incorporating the recent refinements to the model. In order to achieve the objective of better reflecting the effect of interest rate risk management in financial reporting, these key DRM elements are designed to capture the key decisions and activities made by the risk managers and are therefore firmly anchored in risk management. Currently, the DRM model is limited to be used by banks, given that previous feedback suggested that starting with a model for all users might increase the scope too much to be operable. We will start with the risk management strategy, which is the underlying premise for the model and can be seen at the bottom of the slide. The risk management strategy is established to cover all aspects about how an entity identifies the risk it is exposed to and set out how the entity responds to them. In the DRM model, the risk management strategy also documents an entity's approaches and assumptions used to determine each of the key elements and therefore shall be kept consistent throughout the application of the DRM model. Going through the other key elements, we have the current net open risk position at the left-hand side of the slide. It is the current net open risk position by time buckets derived from the combination of expected cash flows from assets, liabilities, including core demand deposits, and eligible future transactions over the period in which the entity is managing repricing risk. It determines an entity's organic exposure to interest rate risks based on what eligible items can be included in the designation. When we say organic risk, we mean risk derived from non-leveraged financial instruments, such as basic lending and borrowing, which excludes the risk exposure from derivative positions. The designation of items contained in the current net open risk position may be done on a portfolio basis. The target profile is the range, i.e. risk limits within the current net open risk position can vary while still being consistent with the entity's risk management strategy. An entity will compare its target profile with its current net open risk position and then decide the risk mitigation intention. The risk mitigation intention is the extent to which an entity intends to mitigate the current net open risk position through the use of derivatives. These designated derivatives are traded with external counterparties, typically by the risk management function of a bank. 
The risk mitigation intention corresponds for what is in IFRS 9 known as the entity's risk management objective for a period and is evidenced by the designated derivatives. It is the accountant function administering the DRM metal for financial reporting purposes who is determining the risk mitigation intention each measurement period. We will point out the key differences to the IFRS 9 general hedge accounting model as we explain the individual elements. Finally, the benchmark derivatives represent the risk mitigation intention and they are constructed by the entity based on the risk exposure it intends to mitigate. As such, benchmark derivatives are mathematical expedients to enable fair value measurement of the risk mitigation intention. It is important to note that those key elements are measured in risk terms, for example, PVO1. An entity would then calculate and compare the fair value changes in the benchmark derivatives and the designated derivatives in order to determine the effect of the dynamic risk management for financial reporting purposes and calculate the DRAM adjustment accordingly. This is just a high-level overview of the elements of the DRM model constituting the risk view of an entity. Please follow the links to the individual webcasts for a more detailed explanation about the requirements and assumptions inherent in each of those elements, as well as the mechanics on the measurement. Thank you.